Hello, secondary one students with you, Mrs. Sara Anwar, biology teacher at Al Ahram Modern School. Today, we will start a new uh, unit and the last unit in our curriculum for this term, inshallah. Unit 4, Chapter 1, Principles of Living Organisms Classification. Let's start. All of us know that the body of the living organism consists of uh, uh, systems and the systems consists of organs and the organs consist of tissues and tissues consist of cells. So the cells are the building units and functional units of all the living organisms body. The living organisms may be unicellular or multicellular. Unicellular means their body or all of their body consists of one cell only. So we can see it under microscope only. And multicellular living organism that their bodies consist of more than one cell. Although all living organisms are similar in the cell structure or in the cell at all, and they are similar in the features of life as nutrition, all the living organisms can feed, all the living organisms respire, all the living organisms reproduce or giving birth to individuals looks like them excrete or getting rid of wastes can move, all the living organism can grow, and all the living organism can sense. So all of these are the features of life. All the living organisms are common in these characters. But the living organism may differ in their shape, their structure, and their way of living. Some of them live on the land, some of them live uh, in the sea, and so on. Also, the living organisms are different in mode of nutrition. Some of them are autotrophic, uh, depend on, on themselves to make their food by a photosynthesis process. Other heterotrophic depends on other living organisms uh, to get their food. Also, the living organisms may differ in their way of reproduction. Some of them uh, having a sexual reproduction or mating between male and female, and others reproduce by a sexual reproduction. So, uh, due to this enormous diversity in the living organisms, scientists have to classify them in groups. What's meant by classify them? Classification means arrangement of the living organisms in groups. Like as we see, we have a group of animals called Animalia in uh, Latin uh, language, a uh, kingdom called the plant, kingdom called fungi, and so on. All of these are kingdoms that the scientists divide the living organisms which are similar in most of their characters to put them in groups suits them. Why did they do so? To facilitate their study, make their studying easier and to identify them easier. The branch of the science, science which deals with the classification is called taxonomy. So the taxonomy is the science that concerns with the classification of living organisms in groups on scientific basis. What about taxonomy hierarchy? Let's take this example for our idea to be more clear. Uh, the Earth is a big unit which consists of a smaller unit called continent, and the continent consists of countries, and countries consist of uh, governorate, and governorate consists of Cities and cities consist of streets, and the street contains houses. So we begin with the largest unit, till reaching to the smallest unit, which is the house. The same for our hierarchy. Hierarchy means we have seven levels of classification or seven groups of classification. Each group has a large members of living organisms which are similar. In most of their characters, then we will uh, transfer or move to uh, smaller groups of living organisms. We will exclude some of them to reach a smaller living organism in number, which are more similar in their characters. Let's take example uh, for uh, ex uh, for uh, to be more clear uh, of our idea. Here we have a kingdom. Kingdom means we have a similar living organism in most of their characters. This kingdom, for example, is called Animalia. We have a lot of kingdoms, more than one kingdom. We have uh, about five kingdoms 
One of them is called Animalia, which includes all the animals. Then we will move to the smaller groups of living organisms, which is called phylum. What is the difference between kingdom and phylum? Phylum will contain less number of living organisms. We exclude here the butterfly. Why? Because it's not similar to the other animals in its character. So it will get out and we will move to the phylum, which contains smaller number of the living organism or smaller number of the animals than the preceding one. Then from the phylum, we will transfer to the class. This class is called mammalia, which includes all the mammals, which suckle their young milk and cover their uh, body with a hair and uh, fur. We here exclude the fish because the fish will not have the similar characters of the rest of the animals. After that, we will move to the order. The order contains less number of the living organisms than the preceding uh, class. Here, the elephant has a proposis, which is not found on other animals. So we exclude the elephant and we will get the order. After the order will be the family, after the family will be the genus, the reaching the species which is the smallest or the building unit of the classification. So here we have something like pyramids, something like the sending order of animals after grouping them, which is called taxonomy hierarchy. Seven levels of classification, kingdom, and the smallest is the species. Kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So the species are a group of individuals that have similar morphological characters and morphological means uh, the external shape or uh, the appearance can mate or can reproduce with each other and they produce fertile offspring. Fertile uh, means that they are can reproduce with each other to give individuals look like them. And the species is the basic principle in classification of living organisms. What will happen if two different species, species uh, mating with each other? Does it work? Yes, sometimes it works. But the uh, produced individuals will not be able to reproduce. They will be sterile. For example, we have a tiger in here, which resulted from mating between female lion with a male tiger. This tiger can't reproduce, can't give birth to any other individuals. And the second example is the mule, which resulted from mating between the female horse and male donkey. And also this mule can't reproduce. So the species characterized by uh, mating between uh, its individuals and giving birth to individuals that can also reproduce. But if they are two different species, if there are two different species mating with each other, they will give individual that can't reproduce again. This scientist is called Carlos Linnaeus. Carlos Linnaeus made, made a binomial nomenclature system. What's the binomial nomenclature system? Let's ask ourselves a question. Does the cat, does the cat, has several names? Yes, in Egypt it's called Qitta. In English, it's called cat. But what about other countries? In Indonesian, it has a name. In Latin, it has another name. In Swedish, it has a name. Hindi, it has a name. German has a name, and so on. So the cat has different names according to the country. So Carlos Linnaeus making a binomial nomenclature system which will make a unique or one name or scientific name for uh, the living organism in different areas of the world. Binomial nomenclature meaning by means to nomial, it's the name, nomenclature, the system of, uh, of naming. Homo, Spain's, is the name of the human, it's the scientific name all over the world. And what about the dog? The binomial nomenclature of the dog is Canis familiaris. Canis familiaris. 
We have a rules here to name the dog or to name any binomial nomenclature. The first uh, word or the first name is related to the name of the genus that the dog belongs to. So the first name is the name of the genus and the second name is the name of a species that the dog or the living organism belongs to. So the first one is the genus and the second one is the species. The first one or the first name of the genus must start with the capital letter but the second one is not important to be written in the capital letter or it's forbidden to be written in a capital letter. Number two, it may be written in uh, an italic way, slightly inclined like that, or underline the two words like that. But take care not to underline the space between these two words. So let's revise the rule again. The first word is for the genus, and the second one is for the species. The first one must start with a capital letter. The second one will not start with the capital letter. Underline both words or uh, write them in an italic way. Other example of binomial nomenclature. We talked about the dog name. Here is another example, coyote and wolf. The first, uh, the first word is related to the genus of them, and the second word is the species. It, seem, it's, uh, it seems to be having the same genus, but not the same species here. Test yourself with me. Choose the correct answer. The scientific name of the human. Which one of them? I think. Yes, exactly. Letter C. Why? Because it starts with the first letter and the second word didn't start with a capital letter. Number two, both of the uh, words of the two words underlined. If you know that the species name of Bolti is Nilotica, so the scientific name of this fish is which one of them? Hmm. Yes, letter A, Tilepia Nilotica. Why Tilepia Nilotica? Because the first start with a capital letter and the second start with the small letter and the second uh, uh, word represents the uh, name of a species as it's mentioned in this question. The last part of our lesson uh, is talking about dichotomous key. What's dichotomous key? Dichotomous key is a description that are ordered in pairs and led the user to the identification of living organism that's unknown to him. Let's take an example. If we don't know the name of the dolphin, we don't know that this is a dolphin. And we uh, want to play a game to know that this is a dolphin. We will ask ourselves some questions and each question has two choices. We will choose one of these choices and we will exclude the other till reaching to the answer. Let's start the game to understand. We will ask ourselves, remember that we are talking about the dolphin, but till now we don't know that this is a dolphin. Does uh, it have legs? Yes or no? No, it doesn't have. So we will move in on this way, in this way. Does it live in the water? Yes or no? Yes, it lives in water. So we will move in this way and exclude the other part. Does it have gills? Gills are the way uh, of respiration. Yes or no? No, it doesn't have, so it will be a dolphin. We will repeat each step for each animal of them. So the dichotomous key, dichotomous key, dichotomous key uh, is a series of description as we said before. It starts with a broad features, large features, then it gets more specific and the privacy whenever we proceed through the levels of dichotomous key. Through each step, you can choose one of the two descriptions according to the characteristics of the living organism. At the end, you will reach a description that leads you 
to the organism's name or the group to which it belongs. Let's take another example. Here we have four animals. Let's uh, choose the lizard. We now know that it's a lizard. So we will ask about uh, ourselves some questions. Does it have a figure, feathers or not? Yes or no? No, it doesn't have. So we will ask about ourselves. Does it have legs or no? Yes or no? Yes, it has. So it will be the lizard. Test yourself with me. Here we have an animal. This animal is X. We don't know it, but we will reach the group which is belongs to according to uh, the questions that we will ask ourselves. The animals with segmented body or unsegmented body. Segmented body uh, means that the body uh, will contain uh, uh, more than one part like head, neck, tail, uh, head and thorax, head and cephalothorax, head and the abdomen and so on. So this animal is segmented body or unsegmented body? Hmm. Yes it has a head and other part and tail so it's segmented body. Segmented body has three pairs of jointed legs or four pairs of jointed legs? Yes it has four pairs of jointed legs so this animal belongs to the group number two so the answer will be letter B. Thank you for listening.